Hello again, YouTube. This is the truth, man. This is my last video today, y'all. I gave y'all plenty. Hold on, let me hold on. Let me make sure ain't nothing showing in the background with castle culture. Watch out for castle culture. Make sure ain't nothing in the background. People try to hold against you, your views, true or not. So listen. I want to talk about on this video, we talked about the, the male, female stuff enough. Just go back and watch the stuff. I want to get back into other things. Now, I want to talk about jobs and businesses and uh, a nine to five where it stands in 2023 and how I believe you should go about it. Um, and we gonna we still got to kind of touch on the relationship dynamic. Because this will come into play with your choices. So, listen. Nine to fives, if you haven't been to college, if you don't have like a major uh, education degree, like a master's in business or something high from a prestigious school or even a state school disrespected by jobs, you're going to end up in the lower pay zone what's the lower pay zone what's that zone that no matter what you try to do you're probably gonna have problems economically and that's even if you single anything under 50 like 50 if you do right you might have a chance you still gonna have some struggles still ain't gonna be able to get certain things still ain't gonna be able to do certain things more than likely so if you aim to be rich, then uh, the nine to five is not the way to go. But you can use it as part of the equation to until you get things going. That's the only mistake I made, really. A lot of these jobs, I should have quit them. But some of them, you know, you, you want to kind of bear with the garbage for a little while. Like if you know your job, you want to quit. I wouldn't advise you to just quit. I would say, okay, I'm going to block out what they say. I'm going to block out what they do. And just get into this thing where you build other incomes around it where you can either save all your money from the job or save all your money from the incomes you build around it. Nine to fives will force you to do things that you wouldn't otherwise do. That's one of the biggest cons with nine to fives. Whereas if you, you have your own business, who can really tell you Oh, you got to do this. You got to do that. Yeah, the states can kind of interfere with businesses, too. But how will they? Other than they might make you close. And that's why when you have a business now, you got to don't trust nobody. When you do, when you div divvy out the money that you make from your business or even your job, just expect the worst. If you expect the worst, you'll be prepared for it when it comes. If it don't come, you good anyways. That's kind of like the analogy people say, oh, God don't exist. Listen, he does, but if he didn't, I'm not going to be the one to lose. Let's say he didn't, even though he does, look around. I wouldn't be the one to lose. The people who said he didn't exist and he does, those are the people who would lose. The people, if he didn't exist and they they believed he did and then they died and found out he didn't those aren't going to be the losers that's how it is when you prepare for the worst in terms of your occupation and your pursuits see y'all pursuing women I'm telling you take it from me it's not going to get you nowhere they liable to kill your dreams how you working a low paying 9 to 5 like when I really think about it on paper it seemed like a lot of money but after all the money comes out, I'm going to tell you the truth. I made $22.14 per hour, and Milwaukee is not the highest cost of living. But after everything came out, I only made $625. My checks were around $1,250 after all the things I had coming out came out. Now, I can make that out here doing doing like DoorDash and all that. The only difference is when you have your own business and you not your money ain't being held back, so you got to be more disciplined. Because 
a couple of weeks of undiscipline will take you all like if you're doing gig work like DoorDash, Instacart, all that stuff, a couple of weeks of not managing your money will throw you off for months. I'm telling you. I'm the truth, man. I'm gonna tell you the truth. But to just accept a nine to five job, especially if you do, if you might possibly get divorced. That's until that stuff is final and everything where you done protected your money. I wouldn't advise getting no W-2 job unless you just want to give her money to buy Pookie birthday gifts and take them out to eat. Because that's what she going to do. She ain't going to give it to your kids. She going to get her hair done, nails done. She probably going to get her her little uh, uh, cootie duty waxed. Which you probably more than y'all more than likely you probably ain't been seeing it. Because you probably ain't been getting it. That could be one of the reasons why you getting divorced. She gonna be doing all of that on your dime. And if you if I'ma tell y'all something, man. That's why you should always have like something like DoorDash. Over even if you ain't doing it. If you ain't doing it, just make sure you can do it. Instacart. Because if you if you making all that money and she trying to hit you with child support, and let's just say she was one of the ones that was disrespecting you, argumentative, not having sex, not cleaning the house. Let's say she was not being a wife and you got tired of it. You divorced her. And because of the system we live in in the United States, she took advantage and tried to hit you and get half of your money from the job. I wouldn't I wouldn't blame you if you quit. I, I understand. Now, of course, if you like a doctor or something like that, you can bounce back easy. But if you work in a foundry or a factory or a warehouse, it's going to be a little tougher for you. It's going to be a little tougher for you. You finna become a slave. And that's why I say if you quit, man, I get it. I get it. Because... I go through my, I'm, you know, I'm going through some stuff too, and it's kind of affecting, like my choice in terms of working jobs. Like I, mean, I really would have been got a job, but there's no way I'm finna be making half of what my coworkers make because of a decision I made when I was in my 20s. What was I, 23? Then I ain't know nothing. I thought I knew, but I didn't. As things change, a whole lot of things change. And a lot of the stuff that was right in my face, plain sight, that I couldn't see. There's some of y'all young dudes, like I got a cousin. Boy, he just singing the praises. He just don't know. I hope he got a unicorn. I do. But he, I'm telling you guys, move slow. Move slow with women. Move slow. Don't, hey, paint the sheets paint the floor paint whatever you gotta paint but do not be trying to have kids I'm telling you man you giving up your advantage you giving up your advantage you start having kids start getting legally married you giving up your advantage you don't realize that now the court has say over what you make you no longer work for yourself you work for her in the courts. I ain't going to never do No, never. Anytime a woman say never, she's lying. She's lying. Almost 99.9%. Maybe the 0.8% might be unicorns and might be telling the truth. All the rest of them are lying. Oh, I would never. You're the only man for me. Liar. Then this is what they do. When as soon as they get mad at you, well, I'll just get another man to do this, or I'll just get another man to do that. I thought you said that you would never, you're a liar. Because when you say never as a woman, what you're really saying is no matter what happens, this is how I'm going to be. You're a liar. They be lying, man. I'm telling you, they be lying. So... You got to protect yourself against their lies. Don't trust them. 
5% trust. So all of this factors in, in your job selection. Because you might think, well, I'm getting a job. I'm going to take care of my girl and my baby. If your girl take your baby and she leave, now you working for her. If your wife take your kids and leave, they can get you easier because all they're going to do is go right to human resources and garnish your check. It takes a whole lot more for them to do that. Like, let's say if you was doing DoorDash because they got to factor in your expenses. It's dumb. You think you're going to hit me up with child support or DoorDash? You, you ain't been paying attention. They're going to give you like $18. Because I got expenses. I'm a dusty. I'm broke. I'm not. I'm, I'm, listen. <laughs> it don't make sense. Most women uh, get further just cooperating. But they want to punish you. I didn't want you anyway. I was doing you a favor by getting with you. So now that you don't want me no more because I changed too much, I'm going to punish you. That's how they think. Okay. That's how they think, man. Dude, you got... I'm telling you, man. Listen, man. Think it through now. Don't listen to nobody. People telling you just go ahead and marry that girl. That ain't how marriage work, man. She cheats you. She could be, she could, you could come home right now. And she got two winged in. She got to do in the front and the back and the side. And you can't just up and leave. That's how marriage is. If she's just a girlfriend and you ain't got no kids by her, you can throw all her stuff in the yard tell her to get out. And by the way, do not move in their house. So, Back to what I'm saying. These, this is important. When you thinking of business or job, you got to think of the worst. You got to prepare for it. You got to be like, okay, let's say this happened or this happened. So if you do both, that's, I mean, that's probably, initially, that's probably what you should do, but you should never have one of anything. Don't have one woman, don't have one car, don't have one income. You say, well, my college, I got a degree. And so, okay, go do something else. Go get your CDL. Go do something else to go along with it. Because the minute you have one, anytime you have one of anything, when it goes wrong, you have nothing. You have one job, you get fired from that job, now you don't have a job. If you're going to do the job thing, do two. Have two. Have one that's part-time, could be full-time, and have the other one full-time. And that way, something go wrong with the full-time, you can go to the part-time and say, hey, uh, do you have any full-time? See, when you got more than one, you can replace and boy, don't make the mistake of letting your job know that's your only source of income. You're done. So when you make these decisions, man, you got to have an income gauge. I would say comfortably by yourself, you need to keep going till you at at least 50 a year. And if you pay yourself first, you pay yourself first, which is every year, you done save $5,000 minimum, you should be fine. You should be fine. You Let's say you got an apartment, you making 50 grand. Your apartment about 12, 1300 a month. And some higher city, let's say it's uh, 1700 a month. You still should be able to save that five because that's only 22. Or really, okay, 5,000 a year, that's like 480 a month, something like that. So that's like, if you get paid every week, that's $120 per week. You should be able to do that. And let's say you've been living there three years, now you got 15 grand. 
you could either in terms of car you could go buy your used car or you could put a nice down payment on a better car a new car where you not you only paying two or two maybe two three hundred see car notes are bad because we let them get out of control we don't put money down on them we we don't put it uh we don't have our income to the point where that payment ain't gonna bother us people will go in the car lot they'll be like where well, your payment is 689 dollars and it'd be like practically half of what they make almost. That's when you have problems. If you making, let's say your rent is 1300. Your rent is 1300, you making 50,000, which is roughly like about 4,800 per month. If you save that, divide that up by four, your car note and your rent, shouldn't be a problem. So that's 13, Let's say your car is three or four hundred. That's seventeen. So that's like four twenty-five a week. If you making fifty, you making twelve hundred. You should be fine. See, we don't. We. I'm not advising you to go into debt, but I'm saying if you do, make sure it's a low amount. Like it's not even more than 30 percent of your take-home pay. See, when you start deciding where you're going to work, all oh, this is important because you got to factor in the future. I'm going to need a car. If you don't drive, you're going to need uh, lift money or bus money, bus fare. You're going to need your own place. You're going to want to buy some clothes. You're going to want to go to the barbershop, stuff like that. You got to factor that in. And you have to sit, you should sit around and think, okay, my ideal situation, write it on paper. Ideal situation to me is you becoming a millionaire in 10 years if you're in your 20s. So that means you want to make 50 or more and save a ton of it, invest some. Me, y'all already know how I don't believe in solely invest. I believe and using that as part of the equation, but I believe in saving money. Oh, the inflation, uh, who cares? Who cares? That just means I gotta save more. Oh, the inflation gonna eat it up. It ain't ate it up yet. Once you got your cash reserves built all the way up, then you can go and start investing more. That's what the rich do. I've been watching plenty of videos, man. They get their cash built up and then they get more aggressive with their investments because they already got the cash. Anybody that's telling you, oh, get out of debt first. Okay, in the meantime, how you going to enjoy yourself? How you going to take a load off? What are you going to do? Get out of debt while you do everything else. I wouldn't advise getting out of debt first. Get out of it while you do everything. So, all of this comes into play. This is why I say, if your job ain't making you richer, then you need a job that's going to get you closer to getting rich. So, if you like, man, I can't do this, I can't do that, you know what that means? That means you need a second job or side hustles, or both. I would tell you, as a guy, stop wasting time with these women and build yourself up. You build yourself up after that, you can just stay in the gym. Eat right, eat healthy, take your vitamins. You know, get you a play thing or something. Oh, you teaching, you telling them for Somebody told me I'm telling people to fornicate because I don't tell them to get married. I don't tell them to get married because that's not the solution. If you ain't guaranteed a unicorn, marriage ain't the solution. So, build yourself up. Build yourself up. And then, you know, along the way, if you want to have like a friend, somebody, it's okay to like a girl a lot. Just don't that, that love stuff don't get into that don't get into that because love will make you do 
stupid things. You not most of the time it's not even love. It's just some type of lust or infatuation. It's just people catching you at the right time. I got married at a time where I just got tired of all the run around. And it, it didn't really, other than my beautiful four children, I haven't gotten a whole lot out of it. It was a lot of fighting, though. A lot of arguing, though. A lot of disagreements, I'll tell you that. Everything wasn't bad. But a lot was. So I experienced some trials and tribulations and tragedies that I didn't experience before that. So, job or college, you also got to figure out your personality or, or job or business. You got to figure out your personality. Are you the boss type that you, you a take charge kind of person? People don't like them type. So you're not going to really thrive in the workplace. So if you that type, use the workplace, get your plan together and then move on. If you more of the passive, just trying to fit in, go along, don't take much for you, you will excel more on the job. Everybody ain't meant to have businesses. Everybody ain't meant to have a job. You have to figure out which one is for you. I know that there's more potential money, economic potential in business than jobs. You telling me you can't figure out something that you can make enough of and fast enough for people to give you a hundred bucks every hour? You can. But some of y'all don't want to though. And it's fine. It's fine. 25 is good enough for you. That's okay. That's okay. For me, I'm trying to be a multi-millionaire so I'm not going to get there with a job. I'm a boss type. I'm not going to get there with the people that held everything from just know, knowing who I voted for against me. They hold anything they can against you when you're that alpha dog, you're that alpha male, you're that take charge kind of guy. People want to diminish you. You have more conflicts being an alpha than anything, I'm telling you. Every level of life. Is somebody trying to bring you down, trying to compete against you, and they should be working with you, trying to challenge you. Now, all of that comes into play, man. But anyway, I'm going to get going. Y'all know we're going to have a Sunday sermon tomorrow. We're going to have a, a couple Bible in the minutes. Real soon, you'll be able to come on a regular and see what my plan is in terms of ministry. You ain't going to see no legal marriage license wife there, though. I'm telling you that right now. So if that, if that bothers you, I would advise you to go find your little simp pastor who lying about his relationship or has a unicorn. Thanks for watching. We shall see y'all tomorrow with Sunday Sermon.